Namaskar. I, Nimisha Seth, from Institute of Hotel Management, Pusa, would like to welcome you all in the session on devising training programs for housekeeping staff. At the end of this session, the learner will be able to explain the categories of knowledge and skill, list out tasks that require training in housekeeping, differentiate between on-the-job and off-the-job training, enlist and explain the different types of training methods, list out and briefly explain the factors to be kept in mind while devising a training module for housekeeping staff. Devising a training module requires a systematic approach. As, as explained in the earlier unit on training for housekeeping department, a four-step approach is followed which involves prepare or planning for the training program, presenting or running the program, practicing the learned details, Follow up and evaluation of the same. This session today will focus on the devising a training program, which would be a key component while preparing for training. It is also explained that training helps in increasing the knowledge, skill, or building an attitude of an employee so as to enhance performance. The organization or department should be very careful while devising a training program since training involves a lot of time, effort and money and a misplanned training module will not only lead to a wastage of all these three but also lead to lower employee morale. It is therefore important that the need for training is carefully worked out and the objectives set since the method and type of training are then chosen according to the needs and objectives established. This unit today will help you immensely in step by step devising the training module for housekeeping staff. However, it must be remembered that the process would remain the same for training employees in any other department or organization. Hence, the knowledge gained today will be useful in all walks of life. In a hotel or hospital housekeeping operations, there are three basic areas in which training activity should take place. Like we've spoken before on this also, knowledge, skill and attitude. Knowledge is that part which is concerned with imparting special information needs in order to perform a task or a job. And there are four categories of knowledge. First, the knowledge of facts, which would include name of objects or machines, like this is a dry vacuum cleaner, etc. Second, knowledge of procedures, which would focus on the the various step-by-step -step procedures followed to do a task. For example, the procedure of bed making. Knowledge of concepts, which would have weight, density, mass, etc. Dilution ratios, etc. Knowledge of principles, like principles of cleaning, principle of functioning of a suction cleaner, etc. Skill training. Again, there are four categories of skills. Thinking, acting, reacting and interacting. Thinking skills are the mental or cognitive skills which would be used for decision making. Example, the decision to be made of whether to pull a room attendance trolley or to push a room attendance trolley when the floor finishing is of a carpet. Acting skills are motor or psychomotor skills related with doing the task. For example, wearing safety helmets under or near renovation areas. 
reacting skills are skills required to handle after a situation has arisen like spot cleaning after a spillage by a guest interacting skills are the skills required to work as a teammate and communicate attitude employees need guidance in their attitude about the work that must be done the staff needs to be guided in their thinking about rooms that may present unique problems in cleaning some of the aspects that attitudinal training refers to are behavioral skills motivation and leadership some of the common knowledge training areas for housekeeping employees are to know about hotel layout and facilities rules and regulations which include employee rights and benefits complaints and grievance handling procedures etc the principles of cleaning the procedure for handling lost and found the formats to be filled keys and key control types of cleaning agents and equipment etc Although there is a very long list of skill training areas for housekeeping employees, we list I've listed out a very few of them, like setting up the room attendant's trolley, bed making, which could include making a day bed, giving it turn down service, cleaning and maintaining different surfaces like floorings, windows, mirrors, glass, wood, various metals like. silver epns brass copper etc uh, use care and maintenance of cleaning equipment like vacuum cleaner dry and wet pickup machine flow maintenance machine high pressure jets etc setting up the guest supplies in a room bathroom cleaning etc devising a program the steps to be taken before devising include analyzing the job analyzing new or the current employee in training needs as explained in the earlier session training need analysis is done and a gap in performance is identified between the desired performance and the present level of performance the housekeeper tries to find out if a training intervention would be required to bridge this gap in performance or not sometimes the gap exists and sometimes the gap is not due to the lack of knowledge or skill in an employee but because of lack of material resources a simple example it is noted that the room attendant is taking longer time to clean departure rooms and hence his work is not getting over on time on further analysis it is noted that this extra time is spent in cleaning the carpet with a carpet brush manually since the vacuum cleaner was out of order if we didn't do this analysis the person would have been sent for a training program where he would be again taught how to clean carpets now do you think that in such a case the training intervention is required does the gra actually lack in knowledge or skill or should we just go ahead and get the vacuum cleaner repaired and the performance problem would be solved with this example it is clear that without a proper training need analysis no training program should be devised the third is to develop a departmental training plan as a guideline or timeline for the programs and then we can move towards devising the training program in detail steps that are involved or factors to be kept in mind while designing or devising the training programs for housekeeping staff the first define the task 
identify the specific areas for training and prioritize. Simple example, we choose making a day bed. Relate the task to the learning event. There are two kinds of tasks that require skill training. Productive and reproductive tasks. Productive tasks are tasks that involve decision making and higher ability of skills since each time the handling would differ. Productive have something new as a result each time. Reproductive task refers to the tasks which are performed the same way as learnt in the training session. For example, making a bed, cleaning a surface, etc. The type of task will influence the designing of the training program. Productive tasks require a person to apply task-related knowledge and skill in a variety of situations. So, the training would should emphasize on planning, decision-making and creativity. Whereas reproductive tasks may require a demonstration method where the trainee sees how the work is done, practices with the instructor and learns the skill. In case of productive tasks, the method used might vary. Like for we use a case study or a role play method. We will be doing these methods as we proceed with the unit. Third. Apart from this, constraints should be noted down. These are referred to as anticipated hindrances that might affect the success of the training program. For example, the biggest constraint faced when training housekeeping employees for making a day bed is availability of trainees for training. Housekeeping is a 24 by 7 department. And if employees come for training during their work hours, guest room servicing or public area cleaning will suffer. On the other hand, the employees are not interested in staying back for training after the scheduled duty hours are over. Some other constraints could be in the form of budget not available, trainer unavailability. Sometimes we have a good internal resource to be used as a trainer but nobody is going to listen to him because his credibility is low. Location can be a constraint. We wanted to do a module on bed making but right now the hotel is running at 100% occupancy. So where do I do it? It should now be worked out how these constraints can be overcome or else we should devise a training program in such a way that these constraints are minimized. Next, setting the training objectives. A training objective is a statement of what the learner will be able to do at the end of the training program, which he could not do at the beginning. Uh, very similar to the ones that we have been reading out to you before we begin each unit. We were taking an example of bed making. So, let me help you write a uh, training objective for bed making. At the end of the session, the learner should be able to make a neat bed in 12 minutes using a blanket and maitre fold. What we rem should remember here is that an objective should be SMART, S-M-A-R-T, abbreviated form. S for specific. Here, it is specific that the bed is not made with a duvet. It is made using a blanket and with metre folds. M. Measurable. We've added the measurable quotient as 12 minutes and a neat bed. S. M. A. Action verb. An action-oriented verb should be present. Here the word says the trainee should be able to make action orientation. R. Realistic. 
can it be achieved yes why not and last t is time bound at the end of the training the bed is supposed to be made in 12 minutes so we've added a time bound activity it should however be remembered that there will always be a gap between the training objective and the performance objective the gap is later filled in while the employee is at work for example the training objective for bed making in the early example said 12 minutes but in real work situation the time should be around 4 minutes this time gap can be covered by practice but cannot be achieved in the training program after setting the training objectives next comes selection of content which is majorly affected by the entry behavior now entry behavior is the existing behavior of a trainee in forms of knowledge skill and attitude previously learned which a trainee brings to the learning event or the training program if a particular part is already known then that part can be removed from the training program thereby reducing the time required for the training it should be remembered at this stage while selecting the content that a balance has to be made between knowledge and skill bearing in mind that both are equally important to achieve competence the best way to know the entry behavior is to speak to the people who have valuable information about your employer training like for a gra it would be the supervisor we can also conduct an entry test or interview to assess the same the assessment should be done before devising the training program in the taken example of making a day bed for an old employee the content could be as simple as demonstration of bed making procedure but for a new employee the content could include sizes of beds in an organization types of linen used for bed making their sizes identification of linen without opening them procedure for bed making precautions to be taking while making a day bed etc so a new employee there will be more time required rather than training a older employee next selecting the method for imparting training there are many methods of imparting training and each method has its own advantages or disadvantages which must be considered before selecting the method required method of training can be initially categorized as on the job and off the job on the job training normally refers to as learning by doing it is given in the workplace by the supervisor housekeeper or the training manager this type of training is for short duration hence cheaper and less time consuming it also refers to new or inexperienced employees learning through observing peers or managers performing the job and trying to imitate their behavior whereas off the job training is given outside the actual workplace and value for money should carefully be considered apart from on the job and off the job both of these can have various other methods of training which can be used coaching this is a training which is normally one to one where the instructor has only one trainee the instructor guides the trainee on how to do the job efficiently follows up on the performance and gives feedback where the employee or trainee is recognized for good efforts and where necessary he is given suggestions for improvement lecture doing what i'm doing right now is an approach which is referred to as one to many this method is used for providing knowledge based training for topics that involve specific information rules procedures or 
to convey information theories or principles. Here, one instructor or trainer shares information with a large group of trainees. Unfortunately, the lecture method requires space with a classroom like setup and can be the dullest training technique. Even today, when we have gone online, probably listening to a lecture, one sided lecture for so long, becomes very difficult. And therefore, it requires instructors who are gifted in presentation capability. Conferences. The conference method of instruction is often referred to as very similar to workshops. This technique involves a group of students who formulate ideas, do problem solving and report on projects. A conference or a workshop technique is excellent for supervisory training. Demonstration. When new products or equipments are introduced in the housekeeping, demonstrations are the best way to impart training. Many a times in housekeeping, the demonstrations are conducted by the person we procure the equipment or agent from. And they come and give the demonstration and train the staff to work on the same. Simulation exercise is a training activity that explicitly places the trainee in an artificial environment that closely mirrors actual working conditions. Simulation activities include training in an environment replica, like for example, a air hostess training in a plane like classroom with dummy guests. Case study. A brief of a problem or a situation that an employee might encounter during his job is given to the employee. And the employee attempts to find out and analyze the problem. At the same time, evaluate alternative courses of action and decide which course of action should be the most satisfactory. Vestibule training. Employees learn their jobs on the equipment they will be using, but the training is conducted away from the actual work area. Expensive, but vestibule training allows employees to get a full feel of doing the task without real world pressures. Additionally, it minimizes the problems of transfer of learning. Role play It's just like acting out a given role in a stage play. In this method of training, the trainees are required to enact definite defined roles on the basis of an oral or written description of a particular situation. The focus is on interpersonal response and the outcomes depend on the emotional reactions of the other trainees. The more meaningful the exercise, the higher the level of participant focus and intensity. Management games. Games are devised based on a business situation. The trainees are divided into groups who represent the management of competing companies. They make decisions like these are made in real life situations. Decisions made by the groups are evaluated and the likely implications are discussed. And to add on to the pressure, these are normally time bound activities. I remember that in one of our faculty development programs, we were divided into three teams. Team one got some Lego pieces and the task given to them was to get team two and three to manufacture alphabets S, U, C, E with only one minute of instruction time between us and the teams. And later, the task of team one was to assemble them as a word success. The time limit for this exercise was, was half an hour. But to our wonder, we had managed. Because the instructions given by team A 
to team two and three were very precise and accurate. Otherwise, the alphabets could have been small or big and the game would not have been a success. The topic of that day was to learn teamwork. In basket exercises or in tray method of training. The trainee is presented with a pack of papers and files in a tray containing administrative problems. And he is asked to take decisions on these problems within a given time frame. The decisions taken by the trainees are compared with one another and the trainees are provided feedback on their performance. Coming to cross training and job rotation. Cross training involves training in areas other than what the present job of the employee is. So that the employee becomes multitasked and they are able to perform all types of jobs. In case of an emergency, any employee would be able to perform any type of job. For example, job rotation. This type of training helps create a team of workers who are more knowledgeable, can easily replace each other when needed and who gain new confidence regarding their professional expertise. Choosing the right training method out of all of these is very important. We need to identify the type of learning outcome that we want training to influence. For example, we would choose demonstration method for making a day bed, but a role play if the topic was handling a drunk guest. We need to consider the extent to which the learning method facilitates learning and transfer of learning to the real work scenarios. The evaluation of cost is very important. We need to evaluate the cost related to the development and use of the method. It should be noted that some of these methods are more expensive than the others, while some of them may just require little time and are less expensive. But the most important thing is to consider the effectiveness of the training method that we are choosing. After choosing the method, we have to sequence the content. I have picked it up from somewhere. Very relevant. Start from what is known to unknown. Start from something concrete to abstract. Start from general and then move to the particular. Start from what is clear of observation. Then move to theory. Start from something simple before making it complex. Start from the overview before introducing details. These are just a few points so that sequencing can be done to maximize learning during the training program. Sequence the contents, chosen the method. Now, Select the media or the training aids. Whatever resources one requires for training program are listed so that they can be available on time. Apart from the usual training aids like whiteboard, interactive boards, markers, dusters, pointers, PowerPoint presentations, overhead projectors, pen drives, charts, graphs, diagrams, Photographs can supply clear and accurate references for how rooms should be set up, maids' carts loaded, and routines accomplished. Most housekeeping operations have films on guest contact and curtsy, which are used repeatedly for training. Decide the trainer. The trainer could be in-house or an expert from the industry, but should have credibility with the employer. That is, they should accept the training imparted from that trainer. The trainer should have a wide range of experience so that he can handle queries, if any, during the training program. The trainer should be available and should be able to make his own training resource materials. Deciding the place or venue for training. This will depend on the number of trainees, the duration of training, what training method have we chosen? What are the training aids that we need? 
what is the proximity of work environment that we need and if we have availability of revenue. Mostly, training for all housekeeping staff is done in-house. That is in the hotel itself, except the supervisory and managerial level. Some skill sessions are taken by the supervisors in the pantry or in a vacant room, while others can be done in the training room for, especially for theoretical inputs. Now, deciding the time required. How much time do I want? Enough time to be able to comprehend the knowledge and skill required. We normally plan a session for approximately one hour input or two hours input maximum. This is the most difficult part while planning the training for housekeeping staff. If it is the slack season, occupancies are low, maybe time can be taken out. Otherwise, it's difficult to spare staff for long durations. Hence, most of the time, training is done after the afternoon shift has arrived. That is between 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. Developing training resources like PowerPoints, flip charts, handouts, facilitator notes to aid the smooth running of the training program is important. Before we shut the book, review the design. Review it twice so that anything missed is taken care of at the design stage itself. The last step is selecting performance assessment measure, measures. Some hotels also plan to assess and validate the training and this also should be clearly devised before the program is run. This includes one assessment of the training which is done continuously during the training program by asking questions etc. To know how much knowledge and skill the employee undergoing the training program is grasping whether he is understanding what I speak or not. After completion of training also, some organizations add a small test to check the comprehension level of the topic. However, this must be non-threatening, otherwise employees may be apprehensive and try to evade further training program. To have consistency, this is designed before the start of the program. The trainer also prepares the feedback form so as to validate the training and to know if the employees desired any other topic to be covered. For example, this can be done by the trainer through an immediate reaction questionnaire like how was the assessment carried out, were objectives achieved, did learning events suit all, was enough time allowed per unit, were the resources satisfactory. At the same time, the supervisor is also concerned. He tries to validate the training since he has to decide whether the training program led, led to an enhanced performance or not. And there are questions like, was training linked to performance? Is there evidence of improved performance? Can the improvement be attributed to training at all? Evaluation is done by the management to assess if the training program was worth the time, the effort and the money that was put into it. Thus, it is seen that devising an effective training program requires a sequential process to be followed so that no point is missed. Many training techniques may be combined to develop a well-rounded training program. In conclusion, one must keep in mind all the points and stages that I have mentioned because unless the training program is planned and systematic, it's a simple waste of time and money. Organizations that fail to do so end up making costly mistakes and as a result end up using ineffective training methods, wrong amounts of training or they fail to follow up on the training used. With this, we conclude today's session and in the next session, we would be covering budget and budgetary control. Stay healthy, stay safe. Thank you.